What is up everybody? My name is Andrew and welcome back to Space Engineer Survival 2024. This is episode number five and we're still on Europa. Last episode we built this beautiful hangar right here which can house our uh, our little automated drone factory as well as a single uh, rover be it the caffeine carrier or the mocha mobile over here. This episode is going to be the episode of upgrades. We're going to be upgrading a lot of stuff around the base. We're going to be upgrading the rovers. We're going to be up upgrading the drones. We're going to be upgrading everything based on some suggestions from the comments. And we're going to start out with the uh, with this one right here, this, uh, this airlock. It's not really an airlock. We added these buttons, but they don't really do much other than change the, uh, the, the, the setting on that right there. So if I were to hit this one, it would turn it into pressurized mode. And if I were to hit this one, it would turn it into depressurized mode. But I'd like this to do a little bit more. I would like this to properly have a timer. So what I want this to do essentially, do I need two timers? Let me think real quick. Okay, yes, I will need two timers. I'm gonna do button and that's gonna turn this to depressurize and it's gonna open the store after a short amount of time. And then I'm gonna do the, the reverse on this side right here with two more timers. So I'll put the timers like that and like that. Let's get them welded up if I can. Right click, right click, grab the stuff and boom. Bam. All right, here we go. There are two little timer blocks. I'm gonna go ahead and name these all and uh, and we'll come back and get this stuff set up. Okay, I think I have this how I want it. So outer door is basically going to uh, first depressurize this door and then it's going to lock and close the inner door. And then finally it's gonna unlock and open the outer door. And then the second one, the in one, is going to close and lock the outer door. Then it's gonna set depressurize off and then it's going to open and unlock the inner door. Okay, so if I have this correct, I should be able to go into here, uh, set my timer, out timer one, I will set that to trigger now. I will do the same over here for the in. Main airlock in timer one. Okay, so let's let's give this a try. Let's say we want to, let's say the door's open right here. Oh, okay, I didn't know we had air in here. Let's say the door's open right there and we want to go in. Let's go ahead and hit this button. It's going to, oh. Okay, it didn't, it didn't actually, oh, okay, yeah, no, <laughs> it didn't do that properly. Oh, is it because, I bet you I know why, because it needs a second to close. So what I'm doing is I'm closing and locking it at the same time. I need to close it, then lock it, instead of close lock it, you know what I'm saying? Uh, do I need a third timer block for this? <laughs> All right, that took a lot longer than I thought it would to make this custom airlock, but uh, we, we ended up having three timer blocks per side. So there's actually one down there as well, and there's one down there also, but we now have it working. Basically, the way it works is if you want to go in, for instance, it's going to close the store, it's going to lock it, it's going to turn this to depressurize, then it's going to open that, and then it's going to do the reverse if you want to go out. So, um, and you can see it locks the store as well, so you can't, you can't open it by accident and depressurize the entire base. So uh, let's... For instance, hit this button, we'll see it close, we'll see it lock, this is gonna pressurize, and that's gonna open. And then if I do the reverse right here, it's gonna close, lock, depressurize, open. Now I've also added buttons over here, so if you're outside and it happens to be closed or whatever, and pressurize, you can go ahead and hit this button, it'll do its little action, and open. Uh, there's also a button on this side, so let's close this. And it takes only about like two or three seconds to open, which is pretty good. But there's a button right there as well, because I have run into the issue where I've been on this side and it's been pressurized, for instance, and I couldn't get through. So now we have a button there that's going to do the same thing. Uh, so there we go. There's our custom airlock. I think it's working pretty well. It, we might add lights later so we can see. But um, as I mean, as far as I'm concerned, the, the red light here, oh, I can't actually... I mean, this is foolproof. Like, I can't get on that side, if, even if I try. If I hit this one and try and go, oh, I can't get there in time. So it, it really is um, pretty foolproof. Uh, off camera, I actually did one for this room over here. So I'll show you how this one works. Um, this one is, I believe, just two... Wait, where did I even put these? Right there. Okay, so two timers right here that control this. What's it, What it's essentially going to do is when I click this button, it's going to close that door over there. It's going to set this to depressurize, and then it's going to open this uh, all in... In, uh, just with one button click and then when I do the reverse it'll do the, the the same thing except it doesn't open this door for us we have to still do that one manually and it doesn't lock this door either so it's not foolproof but you know <laughs> it, it works maybe we'll, we'll we'll make this one a little bit better eventually but for now it is going to be fine uh, okay so what's the next thing we want to do I think the next thing we want to do is rework this ship a little bit because someone commented last ep uh, yeah last episode that it'd be really cool if we were able to integrate this a little bit better so it's not sticking out the side like this maybe if it were kind of in the middle or something like that and I think we can do it um, someone also said it's a little weird how the ship is floating here and I think we can fix that as well just by moving this up one one small block that would make it uh, much better 
So let's uh, let's actually open this again. We're gonna get this ship outside where it's a little bit easier. Well, actually, doesn't that defeat the whole purpose of having a hangar? Maybe I can work on it if I just disconnect it. Maybe it'll be easier. Let's see. Uh, if I go ahead and switch lock this and fly and, and drive this forward a little bit so it's not connected. Can I turn this off, maybe? What I want to do is I want to change the strength all the way down. And this one as well, strength all the way down. It's still connecting, isn't it? Okay, switch lock, unswitch lock. Oh, you're flying it. Oh, okay. We're going to turn you guys off then. There we go. And it'll float down gracefully. All right, much better. Let's close this. I want to work on this ship a little bit so uh, so we can get this a little more integrated. So let's start with something really simple. We're going to move this up one block. So this right here is going to become this right here. And that should connect a little bit better to that, making it so that it's not floating anymore. Um, some people also recommended that I do the, the hinge uh, connectors, which are really cool. We did it a little bit in, in the series I did with Kenajashi. We did the hinge connectors that uh, are really robust and can be used for pretty much anything. I'll probably do those if we expand the hangar a little bit, but here we don't really have that much space to do anything like that. So it'd be a little difficult. Um, okay, so do I wanna just completely rework all this stuff? Maybe I do. Uh, yeah. I think maybe. So this uh, this um, cargo container right here is going to move to right there. And actually, if we're doing it like this, we could, instead of having two cargo containers, we could maybe have one larger one because we now have the space. So if I were to remove this antenna and also both of these cargo containers, let's see how that would look. I'm going to remove you as well, as well as you and you. Okay, so um, actually, here, let's, let's back up a little bit. You, you, you. So if I did a large cargo container, it's basically going to have a block right here. Okay, so here's what we're going to do then. Let's move this all the way back here so we have some structural integrity there. And I'm going to remove this block right here because this is going to become one of, uh, where is my, this, these. Small conveyor, build that up. You're not connected, but if I connect you actually, maybe here, let's, let's switch lock there. Now I should be able to grab stuff from you. There we go. Okay, so now that that's connected, I can actually put the put the big container on right here, and it'll um, it'll work really well. Okay, there are all the connectors that we need moving up to the front. So now I can move this into one of these things right here. Let me grab the blocks for it, and I think this is going to be good. I want it so that we have the large ones on the top and the front and the back. Okay, so right there. Let's build that up. Okay, so this thing should now be able to store a lot more. Now, here's the big question. Do I move the battery? Because I'm looking at this over here. So this ship right here, we want to put it kind of where the oxygen container is and where... Here, let me actually turn the oxygen container on. Uh, um, what do I want to put this on? I think I need to put the base one on something. Here, let me run over here real quick. I'm going to grab the base one and set it to uh, stockpile on so it tries to grab the oxygen. Although I don't know if it is. So maybe we're not connected with that other one. Here, let me, you know what? Let me build this one up real quick because we're, we're almost full on the other one and it shouldn't be too difficult. Here, put, put into production. Okay, there we go. There's our next uh, oxygen container. So the other one's on stockpile. I'm fine with that. This one will not be on stockpile. Uh, I wanted to try and grab the oxygen from that, that uh, thing. Ah, okay, it did. Perfect. So now I can remove this and so yeah, that's the question. Do I move the battery back one block? Because you are about one, two, three, four. You're about five blocks, roughly. So I can do one, two, three. Yeah, so I will need to probably move the battery back back one block. How tall are you? One, two. One, two, three. One, two, three. All right, we are going to remove the battery, which is a faux pas in Space Engineers because you uh, lose all the power cells. But we're going to do it in this case because I think it's it's for the better good, for the greater good. OK, battery. Um, can we get the power cells? No, we're going to have to build some of them up. It should be fine. We have the materials. We have the technology. OK, there's our battery. There is this. There's that. And now I should be able to do uh, one of these. OK, that's going to be our new little connector right there. So that's gonna, we're gonna have it face the front, I think. Oh, this is actually, it's got room. We don't even need to, I was gonna move this, but we actually probably don't need to. So you got one, two, three blocks there, two blocks there. We need one, two, three blocks on one side. So that can be on this side. Maybe what I do actually then is this. Remove you here. Put you right here. 
Okay, let's see if I can actually get the sprite drone in its new spot. We're gonna go up a little bit. Oh, it's it's really trying to get onto this connector, isn't it? <laughs> okay, fine. Let's switch lock real quick so that we can move it. I think we might be hitting the uh, the ceiling there. Let's try and get into here. I'm gonna switch so that I can see, and let's move it into place. Let's see if this works. There we go, and. I want to make sure that I'm kind of aimed perfectly straight there. And let's go ahead and lock that, recharge that, and energy perfect. Low. Okay, our energy's low, but we now have a better spot for the sprite drone. It fits a little better, and we can kind of build the ship up around that. Okay, let's remove the original spot there. I think I like this a lot better. Uh, and we're going to need to start getting some of the stuff that we had in here before uh, back in here. Oh, uh, one other thing, by the way, that's really important is that I should set this to not be used for parking so that when we press P, this doesn't like automatically <laughs> disconnect. I'll set that one as well, just in case. And maybe I'll set this one as well, uh, just in case. Not used for parking. There we go. So I can continue to press P if I want to, even though you guys have always said in every video that it's bad practice and I should really be using handbrake uh, on, on this. Um, okay, so what else do I need on this ship? I need some form of O2H2 generator. So I could throw one right here. That would actually fit that perfectly. Or I could throw it maybe right there where it's uh, one block to the left. That wouldn't be so bad either. That'd be a little bit farther away from the wheel, which might be a little... Well, honestly, the wheel's not really messing with it that much. So maybe I, I do put an O2H2 generator right there and I could do a second one if I want to. Okay, then we're gonna want an oxygen tank as well somewhere. So maybe I'll throw that right there and that can actually connect to that if I put a block in for it. On this side, maybe let's put the hydrogen engine right there and then maybe a second one facing this way so that we have kind of the same setup we had before with two hydrogen engines. And it should look similar. This side's a bit fatter, but it's fine. Um, it, there's no real other place to put this O2 um, container, is there? Do I really need the oxygen tank? Maybe not. Maybe I go without the oxygen tank. The only reason I'm saying that is because if this has ice, it'd be producing oxygen at all times. So I don't really necessarily need to have a source of oxygen on me. Okay, I think this is gonna work out. We've got the one O2H2 generator. We've got two hydrogen tanks, one on each side, and then we've got two hydrogen um, engines as well. So let's get all this stuff welded up and we'll see what, what shape the ship is looking in afterwards. All right, there we go. The ship is in pretty good shape now. It's got pretty much everything that it had before. It's got a better spot for that. And I think it's looking good. We need to add some nice blocks to it to make it look a little bit better. But other than that, it's, it's looking like a ship. Let's bring this forward a little bit. We'll do a little bit of design work here. Uh, I'll come up like this. Okay, I think everything's looking good. I added a couple of armor blocks to make it look a little bit nicer. And I think it's looking like a solid, a solid ship with a lot of cargo. How much cargo does this have, by the way? Uh, 46,000. And how much did each of those uh, mediums have? I don't remember, was it like 15,000 or something like that? Here, let's just build up a medium real quick to, to, uh, to test. Okay, a medium had 10,000 and the large has 40, uh, 46,000, I think it said. Uh, yeah, 46,000. So it's like having four of those uh, mediums, which is double the storage we had before. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. Um, we need to give it a bit of a paint job though. So let's hop over here, go into P and look for something kind of, yeah, I could actually go for something like that, like a charcoal-like color. Um, let's see what happens if I do this. That's very dark. Um, what if I had like a, a little bit of white, but not like too white like that. Or you know what, maybe like a, um, one of these. There we go, something like that. There we go, something like that I think looks pretty good. That looks like a mocha mobile. You know, it's, it's dark, it's like the coffee bean color, and then it's got this kind of lighter color, which is maybe like a, a sort of latte, you know, you got the milk in there. You know, it, it looks like a mocha or something like that. Okay, let's open this up and test it out. So open, it's nighttime though, so uh, that's not great, but we'll let this open here. Look at that, it's looking cool. Okay, let's head over here. Um, I know I'm gonna have to go into G and mess with my settings again. So let me real quick grab some stuff and and, and create that hotbar there. And there we go. Okay, I finally got the uh, the hydrogen engines on a hotbar and was able to turn them off. They're so loud, those guys. Okay, let's um, press number eight right there. And we should, oh, we're flying. Uh, right, okay, I need to actually 
have something to turn off the thrusters. Boom. There we go. We're no longer flying. Hang on. Are we still connected, though? Ah, there we go. We had the handbrake on. Okay, I finally put the handbrake on the hotbar for everyone who's been uh, requesting that. And here we go. We are our first steps. Can I go into... Why can't I go into third person? Oh, I can't go into third person because it's... Oh, okay. So someone told me that one way I could solve this, um, not being able to go into third person when I have something on the ship, is I could add a merge block, and then I could basically merge it to the ship instead of connecting it like this, which is not a bad idea. And I might I might do a modification of the, um, uh, uh, the caffeine carrier here uh, later to do something like that. But for now, I think it's gonna, we'll, we'll probably travel mostly in first person as, as we go to the uh, place we want to go. Okay, so the next thing I want to do, now that we have this looking really, really good and we've got our, our, uh, our drone on here looking good as well, what I want to do is I want to um, try and go to the, the, the Coffini outpost over there and try and build it up a little bit because we have a lot of stuff over there, but none of it's built up. So let's... Um, I guess let's get this back over there. We need to get materials loaded on board because we're going to need them. Um, so press number one instead of P for handbrake. And let's try and back up if we can. All right, back it up. Let's see if we can get this thing connected. And I don't have the pull mode on anymore, which um, changes things a little bit. But let's press K, go into cargo. Okay, and what am I going to want to bring? Probably like at least 300 of these... Um, of these construction components. We're probably going to want at least 500 of those steel plates. We're going to want all these interior plates and more if we can. We'll grab all of these. We'll grab all of the... We'll, we'll just bring stuff back if we don't use it. How about that? <laughs> I think that'll be fine. Uh, production, please make me a couple more of those because I know we're going to need them. And I'm probably going to need some more small steel tubes. All right, I think I've got pretty much everything that I need. It's been building stuff this entire time and... Uh, I have all this stuff in production. It's going to be ready when we get back, but uh, but I'm not going to wait for it all. So let's head out with what we've got. Press number eight to unlock and let's go. First person. And we're going to head on over to the uh, the Coffini shop. Uh, watch out for the Ward of Lothian. <laughs> and let's head over here. Um, I asked you guys, by the way, uh, so... After we attacked the uh, the military installation, by the way, I asked you guys what we should do with that base, and a lot of you said we should turn it into an outpost, so I think that's what we're gonna do. Some sort of, like, um, uh, mining outpost or, like, refining outpost, because it does have a refinery over there, so um, we could do something like that. Um, I've been wondering if maybe I should look into, like, automated mining drones, because I think that'd be really cool. And if we could turn that into, like, a processing facility, and then have all the drones kind of land there, drop off their stuff, go get more stuff, you know, something like that, I think that'd be really neat. Um, now, in terms of us doing the mining, putting in a box, and then drones delivering it somewhere, I know how to do that. What I don't know how to do is, like, automated mining itself. <laughs> so that, that would uh, have to be something that I'd have to look into. Um, maybe using Pam's auto miner. That's something that I've heard of a long time ago. I don't know if that's still uh, a viable thing. But let me know if you guys know any ways to do any auto mining like that, and I'll check it out, because I think that'd be really neat. All right, Coffini, here we come. Less than a kilometer away. And, uh, and we've got a load of materials for you. Here we are at the Coffini outpost. It just kind of pops out of nowhere, but let's come to a stop. Oh, hit the brakes, hit the brakes. There we go. Number one for the handbrake, because I put it on that, on the hopper. Oh, the ship looks good. I like it. Uh, okay. Coffini shop. Um, right. Some of you gave me some really good suggestions. One was that, uh, what I should do is I should put, like, prices of food items on here in, on like an LCD. I think that'd be really cool. Uh, so that when you when you come over here, you're like, um, what do I want to buy? Something like this, something like that. I don't know. But um, anyway, I think before we build out the Coffini shop, one thing I really want to do is uh, build out a way to get down to the ores without going through this giant hole. So what I've been what I've been imagining in my head is kind of a stairwell that'll go all the way down to this area uh, and allow us to work. Um, and I don't know where I want to put that, uh, but I want it to be connected to the Coffini shop. So let's say you come in here, maybe you go into the back room like that. There'll be like a little hallway that brings you over here. Let me get my blocks so I can start working on this. I'm going to grab the color of the uh, thing there. The hallway is going to bring you right there, and that's going to be the start of our st stairwell going down. Or maybe it'll come all the way out here because the hole's already there. It would make sense for it to be there. So this block right here is definitely going to be some sort of uh, some sort of conveyor. So we're going to have a big conveyor block, I think, right here, maybe. And then that's going to turn into like... Maybe we'll use the pipes, because the pipes are going to look cool, I think. 
So this is going to go down like this. And it's going to continue going down to the bottom here. So down, down, down to the iron underground. Went down, down, down to the iron that we found. Okay, so the iron is going to be like that. And we're going to add a cargo container right there. Okay, perfect. I like it. I like it. Let's now continue with this. So the way we're going to do this is an old tried and true technique called, uh, well, I don't know what it's called, but we're going to use lights to go down like this. So if you've never seen this technique before, the problem is that when you put a stairs like that, you can't put a stairs under it because it doesn't connect. So what you can do instead is you can go ahead and put a light, a corner light specifically, on the bottom of this stairs technically. That's, I'll have a little trouble putting it there. But if you put it right there, then you can go ahead and put your stairs in like that. So we're going to do that. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to go down two, then we're going to turn, go down two, turn, two, turn, two, turn, keep doing that. So I'll put one of those right there, and then I'm going to have to use my light technique right here as well. And it's very cheap. It only requires one construction component per light. So it's um, an economical way to do this. All right, last one. If we can get it placed in, it's having a little bit of trouble. Oh, wait, we had it for a second. There we go. Okay, that is going to get us to roughly the ground floor of this, um, of this iron without having to use any jetpack. And if we can build this up right here, which we almost can, we just need a couple construction components, uh, then we'll be able to um, to store stuff down here, which would be really nice. There we go. We now have a cargo container on here. Uh, one thing I want to do as well immediately is try and get a battery set up on here. So let's go ahead and put it, I think maybe right behind this guy, or maybe that's not a good spot. Well, that, that's a fine spot. I think it'll be okay. We'll throw our battery right there. This might take a couple trips because it's a large grid battery, um, but we'll we'll get it set up probably in about four trips. There's one. Number two. This is why we need welding ships. Number three. And number four. I was wrong. It's going to be more than four, it looks like. Number five. No, maybe one more. Number six. Surely. Yes, number six. Okay, there we go. We now have a battery on the coffee shop, meaning that it's powered. So let's try and get these guys built up next. One, two, uh, two. And if we can get these built up, we'll have light. Let there be light. And there was light. Okay. Looking good. There's our coffee shop. Let's turn off our lights and you can see it's the eyes of the coffee shop. That is coffee right there. <laughs> you want to ask coffee a question? Now's your chance. Okay. Um, what do we want to do next? Let's turn on our flashlight first. I want to get some of these blocks welded up. How many are these going to require? Uh, we're not going to be able to get very many of them because we don't have very many interior plates on us. We can maybe get some of these tables set up though. There we go. All right. First coffee table is up. Maybe I can get one of these or both of these or all of these. Let's try it. See, eventually we'll be able to come back here with like loads of materials and just build everything. But right now we're kind of a little bit low on materials. So I can only build up a couple select things. Uh, the floors, for instance, will take a, like more trips back from base because we need a lot more interior plates than we have. Uh, this door, maybe I can get set up. Let's see. I'm missing one bulletproof glass, but aside from that, we now have a door. Boom. Perfect. The elements can't get in anymore. <laughs> okay. Uh, the other table, maybe? Yes, I think we are able to get this other table set up as well. Nice. All right. So in addition to this, we're going to go up right here and we're going to build ourselves a, uh, a good old fashioned turbine. Um, a new turbine, excuse me. <laughs> turbine. The bigger one, because why not? There we go. New turbine. And let's see if we can build this up. I did bring enough stuff so that I could, which means I, I should. But this should provide us with continuous power so that our battery is able to recharge. Let's see how much you're giving. Uh, 445, not bad at all. That means our battery here should be recharging in uh, six hours. Cool. I'm going to give these lights a bit of a radius here. Maybe a little bit less intense, but big radius so they can cover most of the area. Now I can turn my light off and we have this nice kind of, it's an, almost an orangish glow, but I think it works. Uh, and we're going to have to add more lights for sure. Um, maybe here. 
There we go. That's starting to look pretty good. Okay, so now we have this able to go all the way down. We have this right here able to bathe that in light. What I can also do is if I remove you, I should be able to add a connector right here. I don't know that I'm going to have the stuff for it because connectors require a lot of steel plates. But if I do, then I can add some way for our ship to connect. Let's see. Do we have the stuff for you? Cannot withdraw interior plates. Uh... Oh, no, we do still have the stuff for you, though. And then, of course, the problem is that now I'd have to actually go and try and build up all these, which would take a, an age, but we're almost there. Here, here's what I'll do. Let me try and build up these as much as I can, because I think we have most of the stuff. All right, so what I'm getting is that I'm going to need 14 interior plates, 20 construction components, and that's it for each of these. So that's a lot of those. Okay, I did some calculations and I now know what I need to go get from the base in order to get this to work. I need about 200 interior plates and about 300 construction plates. So I'm going to do a quick fly over there and uh, and get everything that I can. Um, we should have loads of construction components on base. Well, I am able to get all the interior plates, but I can't hold all the construction components, which means I'm going to have to do one more trip back here once I drop this stuff off. So bear with me here. Okay, we should have everything now. Let's head down here, see if we can weld it all up. Get this thing connected. Oops. And there we go. Okay, so now anything we put in here, we should be able to grab from up there. So let's head up here to the ship and see if we can actually connect this to the base. So we'll press number one to disconnect here. We're gonna turn around. All right, let's see if this actually works. It might be like way too high. Like, yeah, just a little bit way too high. Yeah, 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 okay. All right, well, it's it's fine. Let's, let's pull, pull forward a little bit here. Okay, this isn't that much of a problem because we know exactly what we need to do in order to get this to work since we did it at the base. So let's get our uh, half blocks here. And we're going to create the same sort of setup right there. And then let's uh, let's get the ramp up. Okay, that should work. Let's back up. And this should allow us to connect here. There we are. Number eight to connect. And we can even turn to recharge, although we probably don't need to, so I, I won't. But there we go. Now that's connected, which means I can just mine iron from here and just transfer it directly into here, and that will help us out. And how much storage do you have, by the way? 46,000 as well, so this is about as much storage as the, uh, the main ship has. Okay, let's do a little bit of mining while we're here. Um, see if we can get some stuff. And we should be able to mine just a lot quicker now that we don't have to fly out every trip. We can just go bam and continue mining like this. This is a big innovation to our mining speed, I think. I know eventually we're going to graduate to mining without mining by hand, but for now at least we can mine by hand efficiently. Uh, eventually we're going to have some sort of, well, like I said, we want to do the auto mining, but also it'd be cool to have some sort of mining ship, maybe some sort of, um, you know, strip mining ship or something like that. I don't know, I haven't really ever done strip mining. Although there was one Space Busters video that I was working on a while ago where I was trying to do that, but I had a lot of trouble. Um, but we can certainly give it a try. All right, so many trips later. Let's see how much we have in here. Um, 61,000 iron, 53 ice. Wait, hang on. Oh, that's the cab cockpit. Okay, 61 iron, not 61,000. Uh, 104,000 inside the cargo container here uh, as well. Oh, okay, that's it. So 104,000, that's that's actually pretty good. I think our last biggest haul was like 60,000 or something. So this is quite a bit more. Um, maybe let's continue. How, how full is that, by the way? Um, that is completely full, which means we're now carrying over to... Well, we're now completely full over there, so might as well uh, take back what we have. Let's uh, get a couple of this stuff that's lying around, and let's head on back. Okay, so I think the coffee shop is coming all along a little bit better. We now have this um, connection to the industrial side of the coffee shop, and maybe we'll add a refinery here or something. In fact, I could relocate some of the stuff over by the military installation, like the refinery. I could relocate that over to here. Uh, maybe keep that as like a defensive area or something like that to attract reavers and take them out. Uh, but anyway, let's get in here and head back to our base. Uh, hop in here, number eight, and we're good to go. Let's head back. We're full on stuff. We got uh, 14,000 kilograms. No, 145,000 kilograms, actually. So it's it's a pretty heavy ship. We need to make sure we don't run into any nickel holes over here. Because this is where they lurk. All right, let's head back home. Calzone, Calman, back home. I forgot about the mountains. I forgot about the flying. 
I forgot about us going through the air and almost dying. All right, we're just coming back home here, so it's about time to, uh, and in fact, you'll see the sun's coming up as well. Ooh, beautiful view of the earth there in our side window. Um, let's go ahead and park this thing, and then we'll get to work on our next thing. So, um, some other things I wanted to do in this episode, I don't know which one we'll do, probably only do one of them, um, but I wanted to get some defenses set up, and I wanted to get the power sorted. Maybe the power is not necessarily a big problem, maybe we'll, we'll save that for next episode. Um, this episode, maybe we'll try and get, like, at least a defense up, like, a weapon, and single weapon, um, <laughs> up along the perimeter or something, I think would be a good idea. So, let's, let's, um... Park this guy up. Oh, we're flying. Okay. Park him. Right here. Number eight. Number nine. Good. Okay. So that's now going to pull all of its stuff over there. Perfect. Um, and I think we should have plenty of materials as well, because while I was back here telling uh, or grabbing stuff, I told this to build a thousand of construction components, a thousand interior plates, and a thousand steel plates, which we did actually have the iron to do. Oh, man. I should have got some nickel while I was over there. Although I think we're actually lacking silicon, not nickel, but... Right, I want to get some sort of defense set up, some sort of weapon, some sort of something. Uh, and where should I put it? Maybe I'll put it directly on top of the base. Okay, I think for defenses, here's what we're going to do. We're actually going to continue this along this way a little bit. So this is going to go down right here, but we're going to continue it that way. And we're going to go out a certain number of blocks, and that's where we're going to start our defenses. So let's... Um, this is actually maybe a little similar to how we did it in... Um, the Pertam survival series, but we're going to continue out this way. And if we wanted the wall to be there, we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, maybe. And this is going to be where, well, actually, hang on, ten. We might put another room in here. Okay, I think this is what we're going to do. We're going to go actually pretty far from the base for this. Uh, and then right here, this is going to be where our thing is going to be. So this hallway right here, we're probably going to enclose in windows or something, make it look really cool, like a hallway that goes, ooh, the sun, out to uh, a little defense area. And we'll do the same on this side, but with about 10 blocks, so over there. All right, so inside here, we're going to have uh, steel, steel plates, actually like proper armor blocks, as a floor. We'll throw a hatch door right there. Uh, I think it's going to be like this. So we're going to have gun, gun, gun. This is going to be the main gun right here. And these are going to be like lesser guns on the sides, kind of flanking it. So we're going to have heavy armor right there, like so. Then we're going to have light armor on top. So the heavy armor is going to like kind of not be the entire thing because we don't have enough steel plates to just go crazy with heavy armor. But we'll do it like this. And I think here we might throw some windows or some, some sort of way to like shoot at stuff. And then up here we're going to have heavy armor again. Okay, I like this much better. So we've got the heavy armor right here where the uh, the main guns are. We've got some light armor in between. Heavy armor, light armor, heavy armor again. Oh, we're almost out of fuel. <laughs> Let's head back. Maybe we'll grab our... Uh, in fact, I think in here we have a, a container that we can grab. There we go. Okay, now we have our little hydrogen container so that we can work through the hydrogen. So, yeah, this is going to look a little bit like the wall we had in, um, in the previous series, but it's totally different. <laughs> No, it's 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 a little similar, but it's not going to be an entire wall. It's just going to be a, a little gun platform. So weapon right there and weapon right there. Okay, this is looking pretty good. So we're going to have a stairwell that's going to go up to about the level of the, uh, the top there. One on each side like that. And let's see. So this is going to be light armor between these. All right, without welding anything in yet, this actually looks pretty good, I think. We've got our um, basically... Door right there, and we've got a stairs right there, and a stairs right here, which will bring you up to the top deck there. Um, I'll put a block there. Uh, we'll have one gun right there, which is going to be a smaller gun. We'll have a bigger gun right here, and we'll have another smaller gun right there, and that's going to be our main little defense platform. Um, in terms of armor, it's pretty well armored. Uh, the bottom block here has is heavy armor. The top one there is heavy armor as well, although the middle one's light armor, but I don't really care if they try and shoot through the middle. It doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, energy this is going to be, critical. we're critical, so we're going to have to go get more energy. But this is going to be our little platform, and we're actually going to repeat it on the other side as well. Uh, probably not as far out. This one's only far out because I plan on maybe having a room right there. Um, this one right here will probably be kind of like over there. So if anything attacks, we'll have those two platforms that we'll, should be able to, you know, handle some of the stuff. Okay, there's a couple of them welded up. I got one side done. We need to get the weld all the way back to the base done. I don't know how we're going to do that. I guess maybe we can run like a a block, like a, a conveyor all the way down here. That wouldn't be a bad thing. I mean, that'd be helpful. 
We can also run it on this side, though. No, we can't really run it on that side. There's that. I wish these pipes actually um, transfer materials. That'd be neat. Okay, just to lay the groundwork, we're gonna get bring these all the way down right here. It's gonna be a very long line of these guys. They're eventually gonna come over here and connect right there. And I don't know what's gonna happen once they get there. I guess they'll continue until they reach... Actually, I don't know what could happen. Yeah, because if you continue there, so if you go under here, let's 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 sneak under here for a second. If I sneak under here, ooh, look, I can even see into the base there. If I sneak under here, I could come out to right here, which is the vent. Uh, I don't know that that vent's actually connected anymore. What are you? Oh, you're just a reinforced. Okay, so if I grab you, then what I could do is let's make this a one of those. Okay, build that up. And so we're actually already solving a problem we had that I, I had forgotten to solve. Um, when we added those uh, those timer blocks, we had, we uh, severed the connection to that vent right there, um, which we now just re-added. So, um, mission accomplished. Oh, why do I not have enough stuff? Let me go grab more. There we go. There's that one. Let's get one more. And just one more should do it. Bring us all the way out here. Amount of small steel tubes? Are you serious? Are you being serious? Let's tell it to make a couple more than we need. I strive to be like Ender from Ender's Game. When a material spites me, I build so much of it that I'll never have to worry about it again. Okay, so we'll try to build... Uh, you know what? Yeah, we can build this all up, I'm sure. Let's let's get that built up. That's going to be the connection that's going to go all the way to this little gun section right here. And I, I don't think we're going to expand this because then it's going to start really looking like last season where we had the, the, the wall. Uh, but at least just have a little platform right here. Maybe we'll even put one on the front. We'll, I'll put one on the back. We'll put one over there. I actually have plans over here. The power thing I was talking about here, I'll, I'll, I'll give a little teaser because next episode will probably actually do it. Um, I wanted to build solar towers on that hill. Now the hill's kind of far. That's the thing. Um, but I think we can manage it. Maybe not on the hill, because the hill's really far. We're talking 600 meters here. Um, but if I could do it maybe like here. Well, actually, it'd be really nice. The reason it'd be really nice on the hill is because it'd capture the most sun, because we're in a bit of a valley there. So what I could do is I can try and build a tunnel. Do any of you guys have experience building really, really, really long structures in, uh, in Space Engineers, like bases that go really far? Does that cause any problems if you build like a really long tunnel to something? I don't know. I don't think I've ever built a tunnel that goes extremely far like that. But um, let's try and get this welded up so that we can get our gun platform looking good. I'm just going to run along this and put all the steel plates I have in there. I don't know how I played this game before Build, uh, build Planner was a thing. It was always a mod, right? But uh, I don't know. There was a time in Space Engineers where I didn't know that Build Planner was a thing, and I would just go back and forth from container to container, grabbing <laughs> all the materials. I'd be like, well, how much do I need? Okay, I need about 25 steel plates. I need about five interior plates. I need about 10 construction. <laughs> I'd just go and grab that stuff. But uh, Build Planner is, it's like now that now that I've used it, I can't unuse it. Um, if anyone's watching, by the way, who doesn't know how to use Build Planner, basically if you press G, this is all the stuff in your Build Planner. If you right click on something with your welder out, it puts it in your Build Planner. It tells you everything you need. And then if you go to a container that has the stuff in it and you use your middle mouse button, kablam. Well, if, okay, if it doesn't, if you can't withdraw everything, but I mean, you'll see if I go in here, it's withdrawn most of it. Now, if I can't withdraw six motors and I want to put that directly into production, I can do shift middle mouse button and that puts it into production uh, right there. And then once it's done, I can press middle mouse button and it'll get the remaining stuff. And it'll also remove that thing from my build planner. Incredibly useful tool. Just in case you've never used it, that is how you use it. So what I like to do is then go grab a lot of things. You can grab up to eight, I believe. There we go. I don't know why I'm feeling tutorially right now, but I don't know. I'm sure there's someone out there who's watching who's never used build planner. Let's grab all the stuff we can, throw everything else into production, and go and build the rest of this stuff. Minus the motors, I guess. Pretty sure if you actually go in here, um, yeah, so these also tell you if how to use Build Planner. So if you forget how to do it, uh, this one right here will tell you withdraw components for Build Planner, hold control for 10 times the amount, and it tells you the shortcuts. Um, oh, in fact, Alt, Control, Middle Mouse button apparently keeps the block in Build Planner. That's good to know. I didn't know that one. Um, this one's deposit all your stuff. 
This one is uh, add the components to production. And then this one is add the selected component. I don't know how this one... Oh, that's kind of cool. Okay, I didn't know you could do that. <laughs> I don't know why I'd ever use that, but but uh, neat. Okay, will this finish it up right here? Maybe we can get all of them? All we needed was motors for most of these. And there we go. We should now have connection to these guys, which means what would be really nice for us here is if I add a uh, one of my one of my favorite cargo containers over to here. All right, it's just these last two right here. So let's do build planner for both of those. Grab, put the five motors into production. Give it just like a second or three, and we should be good. Okay, you and you, bam! All of our weapons are now connected to the base, and by weapons. <laughs> you might ask, where are the weapons? Well, let me grab some steel plates and I'll show you where the weapons are. The weapons are right here. What kind of weapons do we want? I'm thinking maybe our big one will be an artillery or maybe our big one will be an assault cannon and then the smaller ones will be just Gatling turrets. Mm, I don't know. I guess maybe we'll throw an artillery on there. Why not? We have enough space, I think. Yeah. Plop. Okay, and then we'll do a little assault cannon. And our assault cannon turrets had better be as good as, or better, than the ones at that base, because those ones were really, really powerful. Bam. Okay, this is going to be a lot of stuff to put into production, but we're just going to do it and see what it requires. Oh boy, that's 13,000 iron. Uh, it's also going to require a lot of silicon, which we're not going to be able to do. That's probably for these. Uh... Oh no, what requires silicon? Something, something does. One of these does. It's just that. Right, so one other thing I want to do, we're going to have to make some ammo for this. So the ammo that we're going to need to use are the assault cannon and the artillery. So these are going to require some magnesium, um, which we can probably go get. Uh, we'll probably make 100 assault cannon and maybe 20 artillery will be fine for now because uh, the assault cannon fires a little bit faster. We're going to need to go grab magnesium and silicon, which um, coincidentally are right there. Uh, I don't think I'm going to take the ship. I think we're going to fly this one. Even though it's really, really close, so it would make sense to actually take the ship, but we're not gonna, because we're rebels. Um, where is... there it is. Okay, cool. Silicon, silicon. We got all that silicon. Silicon, silicant. Silla could, silla would, silla wouldn't. Silla... silla couldn't. <laughs> Let's put this in here. I really love the look of our, our uh, hangar here. I, I think it looks really cool. Magnesium, I'm actually going to go to the one... Okay, I'll just go to this one. I was going to go to the one with the, 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 the gold and the silver, but it didn't present itself, which means I probably have it turned off on the uh, thing. That's fine. Okay, I'm going to go down. I'm actually going to use the same hole here for uh, efficiency's sake. Okay, that should be enough magnesium. And we really shouldn't need that much. I'm gonna have to check how much um, magnesium, where's, where, where? Lost, help, please. <laughs> I'm gonna have to check how much magnesium makes a um, an ammo because I don't know really how much we need. No. Let's check our refinery here. So our refinery is doing the silicon and the magnesium. Actually, I think it could do the silicon first. Uh, we have a lot of iron here. 76,000 is our new record in terms of iron uh, that has been refined on base. So that's a good sight to see. And I believe we probably should have some of this stuff built up now. Let's try it. I think that's going to be almost... Nope, this is stuff for this. Okay, there's our first... Nope, almost. <laughs> there's almost our first weapon. It's still building some of the construction components for the armor. What? Our, our artillery shells require uranium ingots. Where are we going to get uranium ingots? Uh... I don't suppose there's any at the... I guess we'll fl let's fly over to the military installation. Maybe there's... Maybe I'd miss some military... Or some uh, some some uranium ingots on there. It's possible. Who knows? Um, I don't think I fully checked out this place. I think pretty much we left it at the start of episode 4. And we haven't been back since. So, hello military installation. How's it going? Uh, okay, so I wanted to check in here. Uh, do we have a, a cargo container we can use? Yeah, yeah, this one. Let's hop in here. This is not built up. So we actually have uh, nullifiers. Whoa, hang on. I, if, I didn't notice that these existed. Hang on, personnel inhibitor nullifiers. 
and jetpack inhibitor nullifiers. Does that mean that like I can, I can actually like consume one of these and then go and like fight something and not have to worry about them? That's actually awesome. That's really cool. Uh, we have some ammo in here and okay. So there's actually, oh, hang on. There is some assault cannon ammo in here. So if I deconstruct you, we can almost build this up. We just need some metal grids. Do you have any metal? You do actually. Uh, not that I can grab them because I have them in my inventory. I, what's, what's taking up the most space here? Do you guys? Okay, drop you on the ground real quick because I need to grab these metal grids. There we go. Much better. So now I can put all this stuff in here. Grab your ammo and I can use that for my own purposes. Okay, perfect. So yeah, what I was saying earlier was that we might grab this giant refinery and move it on over to the uh, the Kafini uh, outpost over there because if we want to refine things over there, it would make more sense than having to bring them all the way back here. Or we'll do some sort of drone mining where we'll have some drones bring things from the Kafini outpost. Maybe we'll make like a different outpost over by the magnesium and we'll have those things come over here, land, get refined, you know, stuff like that. So I, I don't know. What do you guys think would be a better option? I think those are both interesting options that would be cool. Uh, let's grab some power from here. And let's head on back. We got a little bit of ammo that we can now use in case anything tries to get a little close. We unfortunately can't get any artillery ammo quite yet until we get some uranium, which we cannot find here or there. We can only find on asteroids. Or maybe if we take on one of those uh, ships, it'll probably give us uranium if it falls. But anyway, this should be our first assault cannon turret built up. There it is, looking out over the horizon. Check it out. Looks very nice. Uh, next, I'll try and get the other assault cannon turret up since I can't even use the artillery turret if it if it gets built. It's going to take a couple trips, but we should be able to get there. Meanwhile, I can grab a couple steel plates and go and weld a couple of these up here. The ones that aren't heavy armor, at least. We'll make the wall look a little bit nice. Eventually, we'll come through once we get like a welding ship, which uh, we'll probably do... What is this, episode five? Probably not next episode, maybe the one after that we can work on welding ships and uh, and mining ships, I don't know. Uh, what are the next tasks we wanna do? Because I think we're probably gonna end the episode after I build up these uh, these weapons here. So the next tasks, I think is pow power is probably the next next task. Then we probably wanna try to expand this, um, this room here, this um, refinery room. It's only got one refinery and one assembler. The one refinery is fine, but the one assembler is a little bit slow. So once we have the power to support it, I think I'd like to get a couple more assemblers online. I think I'm going to set up our first big order of iron. 3,000 iron. We're slowly getting to a point where we were last series, where uh, I don't know if you remember, but in last series, I was just kind of spamming, like toward the end, I was spam clicking like 20,000 iron to be built. So we're getting there. 3,000 iron and we can support it. I think that's good. We have 25,000 required for this job. And inside the bank, we have uh, 68,000, 68.6. There is the second assault cannon turret. Awesome. I want to make sure these guys each have ammo because one might have tried to hog all of it. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to give you another seven and you should. Oh, I'm going to give you another three. OK, there we go. They now have an even amount of ammo. I also want to tell them that their aiming radius should be 800 and the idle movement is fine. I'm fine with that. And I would like them to target weapons ideally. Let's get this door built up because why not? Boom. Let's get these stairs built up because why not? Stair, stair. Okay, this should be the artillery turret built up. And... Perfect. Okay, we now have three turrets on our little gun section. And, uh, okay, that's an independent contractor that shouldn't mess with us. But if they do, we have three turrets and only two have ammo. But which two? That's for me to know and you to find out. Anyway, um, can I grab some steel plates, actually? I want to I wanna weld up a little bit more of this if I can. All right, our little weapon turret thing is looking pretty good. We've got all these weapons configured and ready. The room is not quite done yet, but I think we are going to end this episode here. Um, we were able to get that thing built up and we were able to get a nice redesign for the uh, the Mocha Mobile over here. I think it looks really good. Um, as well as some work on the Coffini shop all the way over there. Next episode, we're probably going to focus on either... Uh, well, we're probably going to do that power thing. So making the, the uh, solar towers over there, I think would look really cool. Um, and we wanted to... There was something else. 
I forgot. <laughs> I forgot what I was gonna say. But we'll 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 do stuff. Stuff will be done. It's gonna look cool. We we also need to start looking for the AMG Sandstorm. It's somewhere around here. In fact, some of you who are um, who are playing along in the series have said that you have found it in the uh, in the um, the starter world. So it is out here somewhere. I just need to start looking. Um, but anyway, uh, that is going to be the end of this one. If you have any comments or suggestions for next episode, please put them down in the comments section below. Uh, if you like this video, please hit the like button. If you're not subscribed, feel free to subscribe. If you, uh, We actually have channel memberships now, by the way. So if you look next to the subscribe button, there should be a join button. There are a couple of nice perks if you want to get early access to videos or maybe like a nice little icon by your name or uh, shout outs or something like that. Those are all down there in the uh, in the channel memberships thing. If you would like to join Discord or Patreon, those are down the description below as well. So um, check out those if you're interested. And with that, I'll see you all in the next episode of Space Engineers Survival.